Good morning students, it's me Ms. Sanya, your Pakistan studies teacher and today we are back with a new lesson with the name of Ideology of Pakistan part 2. So let's get started. I'm zooming the screen so that you can see clearly the PPT and it will be much more easier for me to explain you people. All right, so let's move forward. Yes. Now, before getting started, I have a question from all of you that what do you mean by the term ideology? Well, I must say that you're definitely familiar with this term in the previous classes because this is something which we are practicing from our childhood. Now, how may I say that, that we are practicing it since from childhood? Let it, let it be and let's just figure it out in the next upcoming slide. All right, the first SLO is 1.2.1, which says that define ideology. First of all, before moving forward, there is a link of a video which is given in this PPT. What exactly you have to do? You have to copy the link, you have to paste it in another uh, Chrome tab, open it, watch that video, and then come back. It is basically a little illustration about what exactly we are uh, studying. It will definitely help you to increase your knowledge more. Now, let's get started with the description which is mentioned below. Ideology is derived from a Latin word idea and logi, which means science of ideas or system of ideas, especially concerning the social, economic, and political aspect of life. Let me just remove the sticker so that you can see the whole definition. Yes, you can see that. Okay. Now, as I always mention, you kindly break the term and try to identify the meaning, what exactly it is of. So I'll explain you the meaning by breaking the term. First, we'll break the term idea. I guess something which comes up in your mind, it can be anything such as, uh, you want to invest in a business or you have to complete your homework on time or you want to go to school or you want to do multiple activities to keep yourself busy. So these all are the ideas which are coming up into your mind. So idea and idea is a Latin word and logi. Idea means science of ideas. You're having so many thoughts into your mind, but when you are practicing those thoughts, it comes up with logic. It comes up with logic. For example, if you want to complete your homework, so you will definitely figure out the way that how you can complete it. So that is a logic for which uh, you will act upon to complete that thing. Okay. So ideology is basically science of ideas, which I've already explained to you. System of idea. System of idea means that how you're running that thing, which is coming up into your mind especially concerning the social, economic, and political aspect of life. When I say social, social means socialization, that you're meeting multiple people and you are engaging them in different activities. You're proving yourself through your deeds and actions that whether they should follow you or whether they should admire you or not. When we talk about economic, economic means that you're talking about money, you're talking about government, you're talking about what steps you can take to make your economy better for your own living and for the people who are in your surrounding. When I say the word political aspect of life, so political means politics, that how the government will be run and it will be ruled, uh, ruled by whom, who is behind all of these things, how you can make your life better. So all of these things are a part of political aspect of life. And when I say aspect of life, so all of these things are included in your life. If I say that I should miss one of the thing, so the ideology is not completed because they are the core bodies to complete the system, all right? I hope that the definition of ideology is much more clear to you. Now let's move forward. Okay, when I say that thinking point, what is an ideology? So there are multiple definitions given by different scholars. You can go through all of these definitions it is basically um, in all these definitions, which I have explained to you before in the previous slide, all of those things are written over here. So I have added more definitions for you so that you can go through it. And if the question comes into your paper, so you'll be having variety of definitions to write it down. Okay. 
I won't precise, uh, sorry, I won't um, uh, define more onto this because I have already cleared the concept. So just go through this by yourself. I am moving forward. It is the same as I've mentioned before. Okay. Now coming to SLO number 1.2.2. According to this SLO, they say that explain the significance of ideology for the nation. Significance basically means importance and it also uh, means that how will you uh, write down or how will you summarize the term ideology under the influence or under importance okay now let's get started with the first sentence it is written an ideology is no doubt a root factor which induces people to be a nation in fact induces means to be together to learn more things okay an ideology is basically a root factor which actually tells people that how they can act as a binding force, how they can be together. And that is a fact which is present in terms of ideology. The second point which is written over here is resting on religious, linguistics, ethical, political or some other basis. The ideology provides people with a framework for their social, economic, political, cultural and strategic activities. Ideology, as I've mentioned before, is basically a core body which tells you that which religion you have to follow. For example, if, if you are from a particular religion, but when you see a person from another religion and if that person is having good deeds, automatically that person attracts you. You talk about his or her religion. Okay? So that is also part of ideology. So ideology is something which includes everything. Either it is your ethics, either it's your norms, either it's politics, either it's your culture, either it's economy. All of these things are the core body. And if you will miss out any one of the point from it, then automatically ideology cannot work. All of these points are important on their behalf. Now let's move forward. When we talk about significance of ideology for a nation, then we have to consider more points in this regard. It is a motivating force for deeds and actions. People may willing to sacrifice anything for a certain cause under the influence of an ideology. Now, I should quote this with an example. For example, if I talk about Pakistan, so we are following Pakistan ideology. We are based upon Holy Quran and Sunnah. And if I talk about the pillars of Islam, then it includes justice, honesty, sincerity, brotherhood, monotheism. All of these are the aspects. Now, if I am a Muslim, suppose, and if I am good with others, then automatically my deeds are attracting others. If I know that what contributions my forefather did to achieve Pakistan, then automatically a spark of sacrifice will also develop in front of me. And if this is a condition, uh, ever comes in future that I have to sacrifice myself for the nation, then definitely I, I will do that. So all of these things are a part of ideology that whatever your forefathers did and whatever you're learning from your surrounding, it is actually a motivating force which is guiding you that what you have to do next. Now let's come on the second point that is, it is a source of struggle for achieving the divine objective and serves as Motivation force for the progress and prosperity of a society under a recognized and truthful leadership. Yes, this is absolutely right. When I talk about leadership, the leadership plays a very important role in ideology. You always consider one person or two persons as your leader, and then you follow the footsteps. If I talk about Pakistan ideology, then we are following Islamic ideology. We do follow all of those people who are the pillars of Islam, who have guided us the best way that how we have to live and how we have to treat others. So it is actually a struggle between your leader and you that whatever your leader is saying, you're obeying him or her. And then you are adding up all of those points to motivate you and to reach to your objective, to reach to your defined designation or defined destination. All right. I hope this point is also clear in regards with significance of ideology. Now let's move forward. Okay, there is one more point that ideology provides an insight in making the choice of the leaders. It helps in making right decisions. Yes, it is absolutely right. Ideology basically guides you about that, uh, which steps you have to follow or whom can you idealize as a leader. Okay, so it is a very important step in ideology. Now, the second point is it helps preserves the freedom culture and tradition. Yes, it's absolutely right. 
it guides you about freedom of speech it guides you about which culture you belong to and it also guides you about your tradition that which tradition you have to follow and how you have to help others now the second point is the third point it helps people unite on one platform and affords a source of manifestation of the national strength yes this is very important that we have we always have to prove the feeling of nationhood and the feeling of brotherhood if we will always promote this thing then automatically we can develop good relations with others and we can develop good relations with international countries as well now the another point is it reflects the idea of people and determines their way of living thinking and social interactions yes ideology also guides you and ideology also helps you about that how you have to deal others what things you have to think for your future what considerations you have to make when you are socially interacting with each other now let's move forward when i talk about ideology of pakistan and when i talk about the freedom of pakistan or when i talk about the struggle to have pakistan then there are two names which comes up in my mind one is muslim and the other one is hindu whatever sacrifices our forefathers made to achieve pakistan so when i talk about these two terms then i can say that yes after achieving pakistan we have emphasized on the term and uh, first uh, but before if i talk about the struggle of our, of our forefathers that you can as you can see in this slide whatever struggles our forefathers did they were also having an ideology that they want a separate nation so that they can practice uh their teachings they can practice their religion separately and there then we got pakistan so it was an ideology which was practiced when we were living in subcontinent and then finally we came to another destination with the name of pakistan now let's move forward ideology of pakistan the first point is ideology of pakistan is based upon islam yes it is completely true as i've mentioned before about it that we are following the islamic principles and i've already defined you that what is justice honesty discipline all of these are the pillars of islam islam acts as nation building force in the creation of pakistan yes islam always talk about that you should treat others peacefully you should uh, treat others uh, with motivation you should have a very positive attitude in front of others the third point is ideology of pakistan ideology of pakistan promises that its citizens shall lead their way of life as per the principles of islam this is the core principle which each and every person have to follow if that person is muslim now the fourth one is ideology of pakistan was founded on two nation theory as i've mentioned before uh in this picture that when we were living in subcontinent then we were having the idea of two nation theory that we cannot live together because our practices are different so it is based upon two nation theory so i hope that this lecture was really informative for you and i tried to make you understand the point each and every thing with clear details now let's move towards the assignment there is a link given over here for mcqs you have to copy paste this link and after copy uh, uh copy the link and then paste it on another room or uh, room tab a uh, slide a window will appear in front of you you have to solve all the mcqs and then you have to submit the answer don't miss out any mcq these are the clear instructions which i am giving now few uh, students were asking me about the books for this so i recommend two books one book is homanas for geography and uh, it if it is about a street then i recommend niger kelly the books are the same which you have already studied in the previous classes we are we will continue with these books because these books are associated with akueb as well now there are two sorry three questions which are given so you have to answer these questions in your notebook and you have to when when you will answer these questions then after answering these questions you have to take a picture of your work and you have to paste those picture in the comment section below in kp where i will post a note down that note you have to post the picture so that i can um i can actually uh, keep myself clear with that that how many students have completed the assignment on time so you're having today to complete this assignment and then i'll ask you tomorrow that how many of you have completed but i'm really thankful to all of you that i'm getting a very positive response from each and every one of my student they're very active and they're responding me positively 
so thank you so much i hope that this presentation was interesting for you and i hope that you have understand all of those things which i tried to make you understand inshallah we'll meet with another presentation afterwards till then take care allah hafiz